Hello crafty friends, Lil Rhonda Lee here and um, I hope you all had a really nice Thanksgiving if you're living in America and um, yeah I've been trying to um, get around to making this video for a while now um, to share some of the um, shopping I've done online um, on Etsy and also um, doing some of the online auctions um, to share some really cool ephemera stuff that I am um, purchased and I thought you guys might like to see and I've been hanging on to it not putting it away and I need to get it put away so <laughs> that's why I'm here today to make this video so I can hurry up and put it away and use it so um this might be a two-parter um, because I have some books and I have some a lot of paper ephemera and then just a few other kind of different things so I thought I'd start with showing you a couple of the different things this I got at an online auction and believe it or not this is an actual um, record, one of the first records. They weren't flat, they were cylinder, they were round. And I would take it out except that it broke on the way. Here, so it's cracked. I don't know if you can see inside there, but you see that? That's the record, and it's a round cylinder, and they used to play them on those players, those old-fashioned players. So. Anyhow, I just thought that was really neat. It wasn't very expensive, and I was at an auction, and I saw it, and uh, being all into music and everything like I am, I just thought that would be a really cute thing to have and just sit on my on my shelf, so that's really neat. It's from Edison Records. Very, very old. So anyway, that's unusual, and I thought I'd show you that. Then I also bought a couple piano rolls. You guys probably saw the video I did where I made a piano roll uh, journal. And it was made with the pian this piano roll. It's kind of hard to show this. <laughs> There's the label. And the song's called Granny, You're My Mammy's Mammy. <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, this is a voco word roll. And that means that it has the lyrics also on it. So as it plays the music on the player piano, the lyrics also go by. So here's what that is like. And this one is a little bit yellowed and slightly brittle because it is so old. I'm not sure what year I, I think I did figure it out at some point, but uh, uh, 1921. So it's pretty old, a little bit um, brittle, like I said, but still really cool. So I got that one. And then uh, at another auction from the same lady. Um, who is Johnny, um, gosh dang it, junk journal, junk journal shop. <laughs> I bought another one from her. This one's a little, uh, not quite as old. It's a little newer than the last one, but I love the box. It's in good shape, and I thought it'd be great to put washi tape in after. I think it's really neat looking. And this one is of the song Misty. <laughs> And it's a little newer, and you can see here, I haven't used any of it yet. Um, it's whiter, it's not as yellow, and it's not as brittle. So that will be really good, because uh, the other one was pretty brittle. So you can see here, this one isn't so uh, brittle, but it's a vocal one too. It has the lyrics there, you can see them here. So that's fun, I, I like these things, they're really cool fun and different and they're they go for around 10 bucks 10 to 15 dollars depending where you buy them if you're interested in them you can find lots just google it and you'll there's lots of people on eBay and everywhere else there's they're around so I thought those were cool and then let's see um, this is different and it was in an auction and it wasn't very expensive and I just thought what the heck um, I won the bid on it, and it's really unique, I think. Stuff's falling everywhere here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so it's this auto bridge. Play yourself bridge game. Become an expert. Da 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 da. Anyway, it's, uh, I've never played bridge, but I just thought, wow, it's kind of neat. Got a weird box, a nice box, and like this thing inside. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking about making a journal cover with it, actually. Sorry for the glare. It's metal. And it comes with these sheets. This is what I really liked about it. 
And it's got the whole thing here, the book and everything else, which I really don't care that much about, but um, it's got these uh, padded these papers. I thought they were really neat. I like I want to put them in journals. And what you do is you flip this over and this lifts up and you put in one of those pages, I guess, and close it up and then somehow you play yourself and you take, I don't know, you may, you score and you move these things around and you pretend there's other people playing with you or something like that. I just thought it was kind of weird and unusual. So I got that. That's different. <laughs> I never played bridge. Nor do I have a desire to. But I used to play Canasta and Rummy and all those, but okay, let's see. All right, then um, try to go through this kind of quick because I got a lot of stuff to show you. This was a cool book. I uh, got it in auction, and uh, it's H.C. Martin's Ideas, and it's really old. I forget what year. Let me see if I can find out again. But it's uh, all these ads and gives you ideas, uh, 1935 to 1937. And um, so it has all these ad ideas and really neat layouts, you know, different layouts. So every page has a whole bunch of these. I don't know if I can cut this up or not. I mean, I, I got it to cut up, but it's such a cool book that... I don't know. <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm going to cut it up yet or not. Maybe after I read it <laughs> and everything, maybe scan it. And I got so much stuff to scan though. And this a receipt was in there too. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's got all these neat ideas for signs and ads and uh, different kinds of fonts and things. So I thought that was really cool. And the paper's nice too. Very, really nice paper. So I got that. And then this is a really, really neat um, book. I don't think it's real, real old. It's a lettering chart. Um, it's really, really useful. And it teaches you how to do different lettering. I got it for three bucks. Um, you know, how to do these different fonts. Uh, what kind of pen uh, to use. Uh, when I used to do graphics before computers, uh, we used to use ruling pens and, you know, T-squares and make uh, photo-ready copies for the printer and things like that, which they don't, you know, it's not like that anymore. Kind of almost put me out of work back in the day <laughs> um, when computers came out uh, because, you know, we used to have to do this stuff by hand, you know, with ink and ruling pens and brushes and, and uh, to do lettering and measure, you know, and everything like that. So this is a really neat book. It has a whole bunch of different um, fonts in it. So I got that. I thought that was really useful. I mean, I'm not cutting that up. <laughs> I think it describes here all the different um, tools. These are all the tools we used to use back in the day. Uh, you know, compasses and d dividers, rolling pens and rapidograph pens and just different, different things like that. You know, and this is how you do a layout and and back in the olden days. <laughs> so this was copywritten, I think, about 1960. And that's pretty cool. So I, I like that. Um, this isn't really that old, but I just thought it would be great, you know, um, ephemera for journals, you know, coffee stain it. It was brand new. It's not old at all, I don't think, but it's a t teacher's daily plan book, I guess, and um, it has, like, his subjects, and it has... It's like uh, got this kind of spiral binding, and then it has, I guess, so that they could make copies and leave one copy in their book at school, maybe, and then take the other sheets home, or I don't know what, but but um, it's just full, full of these, and uh, there's a few other kinds of pages, like here, seating charts, and I just thought it was kind of cool, and then they, it's also perforated, so you can tear them out, so anyway, I just thought that would be fun to, um, it was inexpensive, it was at an auction, and uh, thought, you know, brand new, you know, so I could use those, coffee stain them and use those and things. Okay, so, I had to set a timer or something so I knew how much time was going by. Because if it gets past 20, then it's going to make me have to edit. So, 
let me show you this. This was a really great score. Let me see, I'm probably have to pull out a little bit. Oh, darn it. Well, let me see. This I got on um, Etsy. I did a search for ephemera, right? And boy, did I ever score on this one, I have to tell you. Looks like a real boring, uh, you know, binder here. But uh, it, the ad, you know, the, the site didn't even do it justice. And I was still going to be happy. It was $18. And it just, it made me think there was not that much ephemera in it. Well, when I got this, oh, I was blown away with what was inside of this. Oh, God, the glare is going to be horrible. Let's see. I'm going to have to, like, go up a little. Hang on. Cruise up if I can. And then I can maybe tilt it so you don't get the glare. But this whole binder is filled with really cool stuff. Let me try to take them out. Oh, boy. I don't know. Anyway, so there's a whole bunch of these clear pages. These are all original things in this whole binder. Original photos, original calling cards. Uh, here's the back. They're so neat. You just won't even believe all this stuff. I should have taken it all out maybe, but oh my gosh. Letters. Uh like just all kinds of neat 1882 um this you hold up to the light and it changes colors it's, <laughs> it's really it's stuff i've never even like seen before and here's the backs of them okay uh, march 25th 1824 that letter pretty neat um, I just could not believe all the stuff that was in here. So here's some, I guess they're like calling cards or like just, you know, they're, they're like card and someone wrote on the back of this one, a bunch of notes, but you know, like this is about a, a place that serves food and this is an accountant's uh, thing and they're all really old. I love this ad here, 1953 Kelvinator fridge. <laughs> and then uh, here's a, a card, a calling card. And this is um, a flowers, a little booklet. All about flowers and gardens and really old. And that was really cool. And then there's a lot of um, little ads, things um, for um, thread. You know, like, you know how we see all the vintage downloads, digital downloads with the thread things and stuff? Well, this is a real one. Look at this. You, you, you've all seen this one, right? We've all downloaded a digi that had this one on it. This is the real one, though. Isn't that a trip? And on the other side was this. Pooba. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of funny. But yeah, isn't that a trip? So I was just like, wow, this is cool stuff. Let's see, this one. This is an envelope, a little envelope that I guess once contained uh, pen nibs. And another card, somebody's business card. Uh, this is a, a dance card. <laughs> and there's the back, so you can see that stuff. Um, there's this one. Someone who sells pickles. And a calling card for gents furnishing goods. And this is really neat. Get it close so you can see. This is a beautiful signed piece of art. I mean, I don't know how, what it is really, like a silk screen. I don't know what it is, how they did it, but it's really unique. 
It's a really nice paper and it's in French maybe? <laughs> Isn't that nice? I think it's just saying, you know, maybe uh, Merry Christmas or something. But isn't that nice? There's that. And then there's some of these Ex Libris um, book plate things. Aren't they neat? I just thought those were great. So now we get to um, a whole bunch of receipts and things like that. I just couldn't believe all the stuff that was in here. I had no idea when I bought it for $18 it was going to come with all of this stuff. So there's this um, brochure for this place, Hotel Brooks, Battleboro, Vermont, and uh, it's really neat. Uh, they talk all about, you know, this expensive vacation place and it's all old fashioned and, and it's really cool. Pretty good shape too. And um, so then I have a lot of these like receipts like I was saying and everything and there's some like a shopping list here on the back of this menu for the Wombeck Jefferson in New Hampshire. And if you read some of the food here, it's really a trip. Like stuff that, I don't know, I don't know, I've never had it, but but pretty interesting. Like this is breakfast, and it, boy, what a choice of food you get here. Um, stewed prunes, blueberries, honey, apples, cantaloupe. Uh, then you get coffee with cream or oolong English breakfast tea or, you know, all these different things. Oatmeal or fried mush. <laughs> um, all different kinds of cakes and rolls and clam broth. How about that? Deviled ham poached egg with codfish and cream. Mmm. Broiled salmon, boiled or broiled salt mackerel, fried halibut, boneless herring. Uh, and this is all like breakfast. <laughs> uh, sirloin steak, boiled, broiled ham, veal cutlets, lamb chops, calf's liver. Uh, goes on and on and on. Uh, you can have your eggs boiled, fried, sheared, poached, or scrambled, omelets plain with ham, cheese, and jelly. You can have potatoes baked, stewed, french fried, or sauteed. And that's breakfast, July 18th, 1902. <laughs> and here's another one from there. And this is, I think this is for lunch, right? I'm pretty sure. Let me see. I think this was a lunch one. Hot or cold bouillon, clam stew with cream. Mmm. <laughs> Broiled swordfish, Mater D Hotel. Uh, chicken pot pie, American style, kidney sauteed. Uh, Welsh rarebit, roast spring lamb. All kinds of stuff. Oh my goodness. I mean, I think this was a pretty, you know, hotty toddy place. Uh, Wombuck buns, um, frozen milk punch, stuff I, I don't really even know what it is, <laughs> but very interesting, and this was from August 22nd, 1903, that's pretty interesting, so then we get to some uh, receipts here, and what's really interesting to me, and r extra cool about all this stuff, not only are they all original, but they have to do with paper. They're from paper companies. And there's actually um, correspondence that goes back and forth between whoever, you know, was buying the paper and the paper companies writing back and forth about what they want, what they don't want, what was acceptable, what wasn't acceptable, or, or whatever. And, and, you know, it actually, you could kind of go back and forth between them. I, I, I won't go through all that with you, but, but really interesting. So this is a paper company and Here's a Western Union telegraph talking about paper. Again, they're like talking back and forth about the paper. Uh, can't use cross-grain paper. Don't make it. <laughs> so yeah, and this is uh, October 26, 1870. There's some more notes. Look at that handwriting. Isn't that neat? Woolworth wrapping papers. 
1870. Here's 1895. Uh, this is for ho horseshoeing, though. This one. Um, May 1st, 1883. This is a cardboard and paper. This is uh, wholesale dealers and all kinds of paper and twines. And uh, December 31st, 1871. This is um, wool. Wool, 1870. Amazing, amazing what good condition these are in. This is uh, another one from the wool place, 1870. Another one, same thing. This is uh, wrapping papers and twines of every description from 1870. Another one from there. This is a different paper too. That was really neat. This is 1879. I can't really read it, but beautiful handwriting and stuff. See, here's another paper one. I just love the writing. 1870. Uh, paper, dealers in paper. Uh, 1883. This is an order for some paper. This is a, a hmm, to Taft's garage. Vulcanizing, nothing on it. <laughs> this is uh, envelopes and blank books, writing papers. Look at that writing. And that's 1870. There's uh, paper and twine warehouse. Uh, 1870 and this is some of those letters that went back and forth a lot of these were like in December so they were writing back and forth about or oh, this is neat paper too and we have 1870 here too um, Talking about stuff they're doing with paper again. And some more correspondence regarding that. Plumber and Spalding Wholesale and Retail Paper Dealers. You can tell they, you know, were using those fountain pens. Look at that. 1870. More of that conversation. 1870. That one's kind of messy. I didn't read it. Isn't that cool? 1870. Those were the pile of smaller ephemera. And then. <laughs> I just couldn't believe I got all this stuff. Oh my goodness. I was just amazed. $18, are you kidding me? So um, I got a lot of scanning to do. <laughs> so here's um, some more. Wholesale Paper Warehouse, 1870. We're writing back and forth. This is um, some slain and sapin tinware or something. 1870 also. This is 1870, I think, too, that writing. This is Jobbers of Foreign and Domestic Dry Goods. 1875. Here's 
Retail Paper Warehouse, 1870. Look at this one. 1876, General Hardware Merchants. Love the writing. Isn't that something? Boiler Makers and Machinists. <laughs> December 24th, 1870. Pipe and stuff like that. Not cool. <laughs> this one is beautiful. Designing and photo engraving. Isn't that cool? Let's see, where's the date? Uh, 1896. That was all of those invoices, and there was this in here. And I guess if you were in, it's like an envelope, and the thing's not in it. But um, I guess you could order this album with a certificate. So you could order different certificates um, containing heroes of the Civil War. Isn't that neat? So that's what it, I guess they mailed it to them in. Really neat pictures on there. Connecticut. What is that? We're almost to the end here. Mm, there was <laughs> this from the old tavern in Brattleboro, Vermont. Maybe that's what those um, menus were in. I bet you they were. I'll betcha. I just figured that out. These. I wonder. Well, I'm not sure, but anyway, sounds good to me. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Okay, this isn't. This is my mom's. This is real ephemera for my mom. <laughs> but uh, I just stuck it in there. So that was that notebook full of ephemera. Wasn't that awesome, you guys? Oh my goodness, I just can't even believe I got so lucky. Well, I think this video is probably getting kind of long, so I'm going to end it and then come back with a part two to show you some more stuff. Okay, thanks for watching, you guys. All right, see you in a minute. Bye.